let's set up some waypoints for some traps. I think it's about time to get that started. So we're going to set up the waypoints and placeholders for something like this. So we're going to do in our level one scene here, right click and create a 3D. Right now we're just going to create a 3D cube just as a placeholder. Right again, we can change out the mesh later with an actual object like a buzzsaw or something. So what we want to do um, for for my placement, I'm going to go ahead and put it in this uh, doorway to replicate a buzzsaw going around. So this kind of doorway right now, it's kind of just a nice tester area. Another good spot would maybe be like a, a hallway could work as well. So we'll go ahead and grab our scale and on the blue axis we're going to shrink it and this will represent our buzzsaw. So something like that. And now what we want to do is throw, maybe we'll, we'll call this um, give it a good name there. Drag on our rotator script. And if we see on our Z rotation, that's what we want, actually want. We're going to change that to maybe 560. And depending on which direction you want it to spin, we could either do 560 or negative uh, 560. just depends. I think... I'm going to try the negative. All righty. So we got that. Now what we need is a script for this. So let's go ahead and right click, create a C sharp script. And we could just call this uh, waypoints. And then for our buzzsaw, we can select it and go ahead and let's drag our script onto it now before we forget later on. So we'll drag the script on it now. So we have that on there. Then we'll go ahead and open up our waypoints script. So what we're going to do is have this buzzsaw move around the doorway and be able to kind of control that so what we want to do is the first thing we need to have our speed variable so we can have a float uh, for the speed um, we'll start this at 2f probably will need to be faster but that's fine and then in start we need to set We need to set our to our first wave point, and we need to actually have some wave points. So let's go ahead and set up some wave points first. So we'll save this, come back into Unity. So what we're going to do, let's right click and create an empty. And I've kind of done this previously. Go ahead and delete those. And so we can just call, uh, call it something waypoint zero one. And then next to our active checkbox here, we can click this icon and we're going to select um, a let's do like an orange ruby here and then if we go into our drop down arrow remember we can change our size so like it just just about like that so what we're going to have to do is in our top view actually identify where this waypoint is going to be So maybe this will be our starting point, waypoint one. I think that's good. And then we'll duplicate this, control D. 
name it two and move it up here. Control D. Name it and then oops and then control D. Move this one down. Name this waypoint four. So our bus saw is going to have these four waypoints. So what we could do is we'll go ahead and parent these four waypoints to the bus saw. So when we create a prefab, they're all together. Okay. Now we have our four waypoints. What does that look like in the script? So first, we these are empty game objects. So we're going to go ahead and do game objects. Oops, get our and we're going to put an array. So it's just not one game object, it's a an array of game objects. And we're just going to call them way points. Now we won't be able to see them until we serialize this information. So we can go ahead and put serialize. Let's put that in for our speed as well. Whoops. And we'll save this. So you can see over in our script, we get a waypoints drop down. And we have a size where we could put in how many we want. Now, you might need five waypoints. You might need three. You might need ten. So for right now, we're just going to leave the default zero because we're going to control this with our script, okay? So the next thing that we're going to do is create an index number. Oh, I should show this too. So you see if we have one element, one, uh, one waypoint, you notice it says element zero. So an array starts with position zero, right? So this first element is position zero. The second element is position one. So that's very important uh, for understanding arrays. So the first thing, let's go ahead and we're gonna do an integer and waypoint uh, index. So that'll be our index number, right? It starts with zero, so we'll go ahead and assign this uh, zero. Now, for our start of the, when the script runs, we're going to set our transform position. So we're going to assign that to B. We'll say uh, waypoints. So we're getting the array. And then in the array, we specifically want, whoops, we specifically want the element zero that waypoint, so the first waypoint. And then we have to say, we're getting the transform.position of that waypoint. So we're taking our game object, the buzzsaw, and we're assigning it the waypoint zero transform.position. So if we save this, just so you can see what this looks like, we'll go ahead and add a size one and we'll drag in waypoint one and save everything. And then when we click play, you'll see it's going to snap to that waypoint. And then you can see our next problem, which is why it's always good to play test. So parenting, because our object is rotating, we have the, the buzz saw rotating. So, Let's unparent these. And this buzzsaw, we'll say buzzsaw object. And then we'll create an empty. And this empty, we could call buzzsaw. So we'll put our buzzsaw object and our waypoints in here. 
So this parent will control, have everything parented, but our buzzsaw will now uh, rotate independently because the waypoints are not parented. So now you can see that our buzzsaw object is rotating. The waypoints are staying where they are. So now, now we can create a method called move to waypoints. And then we're going to make sure we want this to be called or executed every frame in the update. So it'll run that every frame. So we can take our transform dot position and we're going to assign a new vector three and position. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to actually use the vector three dot move towards, right? And this is going to calculate a position between points specified by whatever our current position is to the target position. So we'll use move towards in parentheses. So the first thing we want to put is our current position, which is simply just transform dot position. And then the target position is going to be the waypoints, whoops, waypoints array. And for this example, we could say we're going to move towards point one and then get the transform dot position of that. And then we're going to specify the speed and we want that to run per second so we'll do time dot delta time now this means if we have element one right now we only have element zero we need to have an element one to move towards so we can save that and we'll add a second waypoint and put in waypoint two for element one and then we'll go ahead and click play to see our bus saw goes to one and then goes to two or it goes to position zero and then position one and that's all it's doing at the moment because we're specifically telling it to move towards whatever our current position which is waypoint zero and then move towards waypoint one at the speed per second. So now what we need is we need to actually change the waypoints so we can have our buzzsaw move from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 and then wherever else we want it to go. So what we're going to do is before we do our move towards we want to get the distance and determine if we're really close to a new waypoint, we're going to go ahead and increment the waypoint number to get the next waypoint so that it'll move to the next waypoint. So the way we'll do this is an if statement. So we're going to get the vector three distance between two points. So the first one is going to be waypoints array whatever the current waypoint index number is which is zero right now but the transform dot position of that and then we want to check the distance against our current position 
and we want to see is this say less than 0.1 so that being hey this is really quite really close so let's get a look right now waypoint 0 it'll see the position of our waypoint 0 and see oh you're actually at point 0 that's less than point 1 so if it is we need the next waypoint number so in our if statement, we'll get the waypoint index, and we're just going to do plus plus, which will increment it by 1. So that means when we get, we're at 0, and 0, that's less than 0.1, it'll add, and the waypoint index becomes 1. Then it'll move towards waypoint 1. And when our position is really close to waypoint 1, it'll change the waypoint index to 2. So that also means our move towards now can't specify a specific waypoint location. Instead, we're going to change this 1 to waypoint index. So we're going to move towards whatever the waypoint number, the index number is. This is going to increment it so that we will continue to move towards each waypoint. Now, just as a safety here, we, we may have a problem. So if you have, if we increment our last wave point and we add one to it, and then we have a wave point number that doesn't exist in our array, we'll get an error. So if there's only four locations, but then our wave point index equals uh, five, right, we would get an error. So what we're going to do is do waypoint, if the waypoint index is equal to how many waypoints there are in the array. So what we can do is get the waypoints array and just do dot length. This will get how many are in the array. Then, so if our waypoint index is equal to the amount in the array, then we can go ahead and set the waypoint index back to zero. And this will, this will kind of be our safety trip so it doesn't ever go um, over the length of our array. So now we can save this. And we're going to set this to zero and I want to show you an easy way to do this. So what we're going to do is select waypoints. Well, first we have to select our buzzsaw object, and I'm going to lock the inspector. Then we're going to click waypoint 1 and shift click waypoint 4. And then I'm going to drag them onto the waypoints array text. So it has to be right here. We drop it on, and it assigns them automatically. So now... We test that out, and you'll see we get waypoint 0, 1, 2, and then 3, and then it goes back to 0. So it's going all the way around. So what if we want it to go up and then back? So what we could do is, in this case, we're manually going to add, let's say, 7. So after waypoint four, maybe we want to go to go back to, whoops, to three, and then to two, and then to one, maybe, or maybe we should leave that blank. So we'll test it out. Let's see. So we've got waypoint zero, one, two, three, four, back to three, to two, or one, zero, to one to two, to three, back to two, and it's working wonderfully. So you can set that up and apply this where you may want to have traps, uh, maybe a hallway with multiple traps that you'll have to dodge around. And then once we get some imported game art, we can swap out the graphics to have an actual buzzsaw.